Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson. My partner, Malik Hill. I got nothing else to say. Malik, take it away. Listen. It's... I, I don't even know how to start. I've I've never been that emotional after watching a football game, any any sporting event. I've never felt that way watching a game. I've never seen Michigan win at Ohio State. I've never seen Michigan beat Ohio State twice in a row. I've never seen a Michigan quarterback outside of Denard Robinson make big plays against Ohio State. I've never seen Ohio State mentally fold like that two years in a row. This is a feeling that I I, I don't know how to de- like I don't know how to deal with it right now. <laughs> I I don't know I don't know what what is like Jim Harbaugh two years ago in 2020 after the COVID season, Michigan fans basically wanted him gone. Yep, he was 0 5 against Ohio State. 2016 looked like the year where they were going to get over the hump in his second year. They lose in overtime. 2017, they're up 14 nothing. They end up losing when Dwayne Haskins comes in off the bench. And 18 and 19, they get smacked back to back years. I don't think any Michigan fan thought Jim Harbaugh could go back to the drawing board and just reinvent, reinvent the program and himself and still keep some of the same principles of football that he wanted to play. They just beat up Ohio State two years in a row. Mm-hmm. I think we both said that if so, if there was a blowout, it most likely would be Ohio State. We agreed on that. Yep. And I think pretty much everybody else in the country agreed. Most people thought Ohio State was just going to run them over, and it wasn't going to be close. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why Ohio State got blown out again. And it looked like it on the very first drive. Yeah. I think Ohio State took on the mentality of all everybody predicting this game and everybody thinking of what this game was going to be. And they thought, we're just going to come in and throw a few knockout punches and it's over. That's what everybody started to think mm-hmm. with this game. Ohio State is going to turn it up. They're going to hit a, few major, a bunch of big plays. C.J. Stroud is going to have his Heisman moments. It's going to be like 52 to like 20, and that's it. Uh, Michigan came for a fight. I don't think that's what Ohio State came for. And I think that's, my, that's probably the biggest reason why this rivalry has swung the way it has. Ohio State has all the talent, the five-star guys basketball on grass basically they can run it up on anybody but when it comes to these types of games Notre Dame wasn't talented enough to hang with them and Marcus Freeman was a first year coach last week Maryland played with them almost the whole game but they didn't have what it took coaching and talent wise Mm -hmm. they've been getting pushed to the edge but they still think we got to come in and just throw knockout punches. And they weren't prepared for Michigan to throw their own knockout punches. They dared J.J. McCarthy to throw the ball in the first half. He hit on open deep shots. They still went into the half of the lead. They came out into the second half. And they barely adjusted. J.J. hit another deep ball in the third. They clearly started to emo- emotionally lose it because mm-hmm. that that play where G Scott just rammed his head into Rod Moore on the sideline, right, which backed <laughs> him up to like a first and thirty five. He lost his cool. All Ohio State players they 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 were clearly not ready for that much of a fight. Mm-hmm. And boy, is that beautiful to see. <laughs> It it is wild that Michigan has become the aggressor, mm-hmm. and just the mentally. I'm not going to take away Ohio State's physical toughness. In that first half, they were getting what they wanted for the most part, right? Even though that was kind of Jesse Minter's game plan, was to kind of bend not break on defense, right? But yeah, it was like 150 rushing yards to like 10, 
in the in the first half with rushing yards on both sides. But yeah, Michigan has become a second half team. They've won every game in the second half this season, and they saved their best for this game. Twenty eight to three in the second half. Donovan Edwards hits two major long rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. The knockout punches. Yeah, the knockout punches. <clears throat> and you could see once Donovan Edwards hit that first one, the entire vibe and just like everything in that stadium just went all the way down. Yeah. The fans went quiet. Nobody knew what was happening. Mm-hmm. The players didn't know what to do. They didn't they didn't know how to handle taking that many punches. And Jim has figured it out. And Michigan is back to the top somehow. I've this is the first time I've seen something like this. Yeah. And yeah, especially Jed, I, I mean I'm Ryan Day is one and two against Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. One and two. And you asked me last week, would I rather have Jim Harbaugh or Ryan Day? And I said Ryan Day. I'm starting to regret that decision. Um a couple key points that I took away. I loved and a lot of some people have been saying this. I love that Jim Harbaugh in Michigan saved a lot of their special plays for this game. Yeah, that that jump pass from Kalel Mullings to get the first down. That right. that really showed like they were just a, a step ahead. And the thing that I like about it, it gave me Mark D'Antonio vibes playing Michigan. I can see that. Michigan State always seemed to bring their best plays against Michigan. And it feels like Michigan finally learned if we're going to beat these guys, we got to change things up. We got to save the best for last. Exactly. And they did it. It was cool. I I like that they they did that kind of thing. And they survived Blake Corum getting two carries. It looked like he just couldn't do it. Uh, Donovan Edwards being back was huge, though, obviously. He had a cast on his right hand. He couldn't carry it with his right hand. Right. But the talent is there for sure. Um. To play a little devil's advocate, and I'm not going to... This doesn't take away from the win. I just wonder what the difference would have been if Ohio State had their actual running backs instead of their... What were they on? Fourth string running back? Like, uh, Well, Chip Trianum, the guy that transferred in from Arizona he's State... He's a linebacker. He transferred in. He was a all-conference running back at Arizona State. Mm-hmm. Transferred back home to Ohio to play linebacker. Right. And they brought him <laughs> in to play running back again. Yeah. Which was so yeah. He, wild. He has all conference level running back ability. He just hasn't played played it all season. Yeah. Um, so that's like one thing, but again, you can't take it away because Michigan was down Blake Corum. Uh so not much to be said there. Um what was the other thing I was gonna mention? Um Yeah, I I don't know. It it seemed like you're right. Like Ohio State just took their foot off the gas or something. Uh, their their defense was awful at times. Their like it, their safeties kept getting lost and confused, mm-hmm. and that was pretty strange. Yeah, to to see. Um, it was pretty unfortunate. Uh, for <laughs> watching the game because uh, I watched it with some family members, and my grandpa uh lives in Muskegon, went to Muskegon High School back in the day, and the cornerback for Ohio State is from Muskegon, and he got torched uh <laughs> one time. Uh, I think it was on Cornelius Johnson's second touchdown. It might have been the first touchdown. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Um, so that was kind of funny because you're happy. The, he was happy the Michigan scored, but it stunk that it was on the Muskegon guy. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, it was just it was just wild how many broken down plays there were. Now, I still don't know what I think about J.J. McCarthy. He made some big plays. It didn't seem like he got rattled under the pressure. I, I think at least he showed he's built for this. He's built for these moments. Yes. Whether, I, whether he becomes the best, that special guy is still, yeah. he still has to prove that. He could handle but, the moment. Yes. Um, he didn't, he didn't throw the ball away. Uh, so I think that's really important. But, I think I saw some people, and I'm not saying all, I think it was, I saw some people getting a little too hype on these big touchdown plays, which I wouldn't say are necessarily J.J. throwing the ball on a rope. 
Uh, he he hit open people, right? He, which is all he had. He to made do. the throws that he needed to make. Yes. So I'm not going to take that away from him, but I just I don't know if he's that guy yet. Still. Now, does that mean anything for this season? Probably not. To be honest, maybe if they make it to the national championship game, then it might be a cause for concern. But let's just slow the boat here a little bit because now we got to talk about playoffs and things. And I don't want us Michigan, you Michigan guys, to get too too hyped about it. Oh, I, I'm probably the least hype person in terms of the net. I've heard everybody else in the media and fans talking about how Michigan can win it all. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's just win the Big Ten first. Right. Let's, let's get past Purdue, yep. which I, I'm i very sure it won't be a game mm-hmm. for more than a quarter. Right. But yeah, let's win the Big Ten first, see who's – there mm-hmm. in the playoff matchup, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. And I think that's important just because I do think Michigan can make it to the national championship game. I'm not saying that they can't, uh, but we just got to slow it down a little bit because in this state, too many people get too excited about these kind of games, um, and it makes me nervous. Just like last year, like Michigan, they beat Ohio State. Everybody's super happy. Wow, they can win the national championship. They make it in the playoffs. Don't look so great. Pump the brakes yeah. a little bit. I, honestly, I, I think you bring that up is funny because I think there are still a lot of older Michigan fans that barely care about the playoff. Yeah. Like winning winning two in a row against Ohio State and winning right. back-to-back Big Ten championships, mm-hmm. that is more important right. than whatever the playoff is becoming to them. Yeah. And I can't blame them for that because that's right. what Michigan football was. You beat Ohio State, you win the Big Ten, you maybe win the Rose Bowl. That's what mattered. Yeah. And I, I get that, too. I, I think it's good. Um, but now, if we're going to start, you know, Michigan is back in the national conversation, that's typically the next step. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Harbaugh probably looks like he's gotten over, you know, his little monkey on his back. But now it's time to step it up one more time. Now we got to get a playoff win. Um, now, if they end up playing TCU, I'm not as worried. But if they have to play USC, it's more of a threat. It m- gets more interesting. That one man show is a problem. Yeah. So we'll see. It's super exciting. Got to get through the Big Ten Championship, obviously. But like you said, shouldn't be too bad. Should Should we just not even waste time and just? I'm gonna predict like like 45 to like 14, maybe. I think that could end up being like the score of the Big Ten. Yeah. Championship game. Um. Or maybe they don't unload the full clip. After the Ohio State game, maybe it's like 35 or 38 to 14, something like that. Right. But this, yeah, I th- yeah, I think it's multiple touchdowns. I, I think the best thing about this, too, is Michigan doesn't have to play another meaningful game until the playoffs. Um, I'm pretty, like, even if the wild chance that they lost to Purdue, they, I, I think they'd still make it in. I think the they still make it in. Yeah. Uh, Which is crazy. So the nice thing is about all this, they can get Blake Corum healthy and get him back right for the playoffs. Uh, so that'll be super important. Um, I do think Purdue's defense is a little has been playing a little bit better than average lately. So yeah. they could be okay, but yeah, I don't I don't think this game should be a problem. From a from a down to down basis, it's yeah, it's really inconsistent with Purdue. There's a reason why they're eight and four. Yeah. But if we get into the rest of the rankings They have been known as the spoiler makers though. Just got to bring that up. Yeah, they've upset top ten, top five teams before. Mm-hmm. It gets real interesting. Our top four still uh, Georgia, Michigan, TCU. As I mentioned, USC snuck into the fourth spot because Ohio State lost. Um, Alabama's all the way back to six now after crazy things happening. Clemson losing again. Um, it's been kind of wild. LSU losing again. Uh, so all of a sudden, there's not too many competitors left. And man, would I be upset if Alabama makes it back in. So USC, please do your job. Uh, USC is going to play Utah on Friday night. That's for the Pac-12 championship. Should be interesting. Utah, obviously, is a good team. Yeah. But uh, they've stumbled a little bit along the way. 
And USC just seems like they're rolling right now. So I would I would assume USC is going to stay there and this top four is not going to change. Yeah, TC, TCU has a challenge against Kansas State too. Right. Because that's a tough team. Yep. Yeah, that can play with most teams in the country. Yeah, and that's that's Saturday afternoon, the Big 12 championship against Adrian Martinez, Kansas State. I think it just depends on like what Kansas State's team do we see. Like is it the one that has won nine games or the, game, the one that loses, has lost three games? Because I feel like Kansas State has been looking really good or not so good at all. Well, at this point, it's not even – Adrian Martinez has kind of lost grip of the job because Will Howard has just been so much – in terms of playing the quarterback position right, right, and not right. just like being a great football player, Will Howard has been better than Adrian Martinez. And yeah. He's been a big reason why their offense has opened up. So he brings a different element with him really being able to throw it downfield. Mm-hmm. Um, then we got LSU-Georgia. SEC championship. I don't expect it to be a much game, of a game. It doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Because LSU of, lost to Texas A&M last yeah, week. Yeah, because of that LSU loss, it, it kind of ruins the whole thing. Um, UCF plays Tulane. That should be a fun game. Uh, Tulane, I mean, they could have an 11-2 and two season. Uh, would be pretty cool for them. Yeah. And then the ACC championship also doesn't matter anymore because Clemson and North Carolina lost. Uh, this past weekend, both in very disheartening uh, ways. North Carolina losing to NC State in double overtime and Clemson losing to South Carolina basically in the second half for the most part. Spence, Spencer Rattler still still hanging around. They, the, the talent, it, it sneaks up yeah. even with the inconsistencies. It, it ends up sneaking up, and that's mm-hmm. why. South Carolina was able to get over the hump at the last minute. Yeah. So, again, that kind of leads back to these top four teams need to do something terrible to lose their spot for Ohio State or Alabama to come back in. And Ohio State and Alabama are probably the only two teams that can do it. Yeah, they they would be. I can't see any other team jumping back in. Um. So, yeah. Before we move on, I think I should mention a few of the the coaching news that's been going on. Okay. Because it's been some big stuff. Nebraska hired former Temple, Baylor, and unfortunately Carolina Panthers coach, Matt Rule. Yes. His college pedigree is very high, very successful. Right. I think the NFL stuff, it barely matters in terms of – Just forget about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This should be a really good hire for Nebraska. He's a program builder. That's what they need right now. Mm-hmm. He's got an eight-year contract. I assume they'll give him as much time as he needs. Arizona State hired Kenny, Kenny Dillingham, who is the Oregon offensive coordinator. He is now the youngest coach in college football at 32 years old. So congratulations to Kenny Dillingham. He, all, he also went to Arizona State, so good for him. Wisconsin made probably the biggest hire in their school history. And it is strange because their fan base is like halfway in, halfway out on it. They hired Luke Fickle from Cincinnati, mm-hmm. who has built that program up to being playoff caliber and top 15 most years. They bring him in, and I think it's awesome that they brought him in because with Lincoln Riley and Chip Kelly and those schools coming over to the Big Ten, that conference is going to be a coaching gauntlet, especially with Michigan coming up to the top now. Mm-hmm. Ohio State isn't going anywhere. Wisconsin needed an upgrade. Right. And I don't think Jim Leonard was going to be enough. <clears throat> so Luke Fickle going to Wisconsin could really get them up to a level, at least to competing for the Big Ten Championship every few years. Yeah. Because they there was a time where in the early 2010s, Wisconsin was in the game almost every year. Mm-hmm. So they could get back to it now. And uh, the last biggest one was Auburn hiring U Freeze. Hugh Freeze from Liberty, hmm. former Ole Miss coach, got into scandals there. Look up everything that happened there. I won't even get into it now. Goes to Liberty, cleans up his image a little bit, wins a lot of games, gets uh, Malik um, Willis into the NFL. Right. Has another really good season this year. And now Auburn hires him on, hires him on the tail of even more controversy. So it's half Auburn fans that are like, this is a mistake. 
half Auburn fans just saying he's a decent enough guy. We just need to win. Mm-hmm. So Hugh Freeze is a good enough coach to win in the SEC. He's beat Nick Saban before. He went pretty high with Ole Miss and recruited at a high level. So he should be a good fit at Auburn. Hopefully the bad stuff doesn't catch up to him. Mm-hmm. And Deion Sanders might be picking another school Sunday. Hmm. Interesting. They say it's down to USF, Cincinnati, and Colorado. Hmm. So, yeah, well, we Deion showed me he, he went to Jackson State. I think they're like 22-2 and two in the last two seasons. Yeah. They're undefeated right now. He's proven his point. Right. In terms of what he can do as a coach mm-hmm. and building a culture. So, yeah, whoever gets him, congratulations. Yeah. All righty. That's about it with college football. Like we said, we got all the conference championships this weekend. Some should be more interesting than others. Um, but for the most part, it seems like it's mostly going to be chalk. Oh, one last thing. Go for it. Just just randomly, because we both know Trent Dilfer. Oh, yeah, yeah. UAB hired him. Mm-hmm. He's been coaching high school for the past, like, yeah, four that or five was, years. That was the rumor I heard yesterday yeah. that uh, they were going to sit down and talk to him. So. UAB is swinging for the fences and going for Trent Dilfer, so that should be interesting. Yeah. More former uh, players getting getting jobs. Pretty interesting. Um, so we're moving to college basketball. College basketball has been picking up, and the games have been good. Yeah. Um, we saw some tournaments over this Thanksgiving weekend that were a lot of fun. Um, basically, the Phil Knight uh, Invitational and the Phil Knight, uh, what was the other one called? The Legacy. Um, two tournaments running, um, basically in honor of, of Nike and Phil Knight and what he's done for college basketball, basically. And right away, we got all sorts of games um, going all over the place in scoring. We saw Arkansas beating San Diego State in the Maui Invitational that happens every year. Um, the Battle for Atlantis was going on. It's one of the best weekends for college basketball uh, kicking off. Arizona beating Creighton, 14 over 10. Uh, Ohio State getting a win over Texas Tech was pretty big, showing that Ohio State's, you know, they're still around, even though they're not ranked, but they probably will be pretty soon here. I think they're at 25 now, just like right Did at the Did they just edge. get updated? Okay. Yeah. Um, but then the big ones, Alabama took down Michigan State after Michigan State, you know, having having a good run to start the season. But um, the unfortunate part in this one was Michigan State sustained injuries prior Malik Hall going to be out for a couple weeks that's a big blow and Jade Nakins I think he's just kind of banged up so kind of hurts Michigan State in the near future but the team has looked good and we'll go over some of their other games um, in a little bit as well uh, North Carolina beat Portland in the Invitational to move on to the next round Portland gave everybody problems they did that was pretty cool to see them they, they've yeah. looked good. Yes, I, I agree. Um, Purdue looked really good in these tournaments. Gonzaga was pretty solid. Um, until we got to, was it Friday? No, it's Saturday. Well, Friday there were some big ones. Michigan State bounced back. They beat Oregon, which was a solid win. Um, Oregon, maybe not as strong as people originally thought. Once they got into these tournaments, they started uh, dropping a couple games here and there. Um, but Michigan State getting a nice bounce back, like I said. The big upset on Friday was Iowa State taking down UNC for UNC's first loss of the season. And that was behind Caleb Grill hitting nine threes. Yeah, it he, was, he was unconscious. It was fun to watch. I love that kind of stuff. Um, Iowa took down Clemson in a different tournament. Tennessee took down number three Kansas in the battle for Atlanta. That was a big win. All the big teams getting knocked down. In the Phil Knight Invitational, Alabama, after coming off a win over Michigan State, lost to UConn. So UConn is back. Uh, Sonogo is, like, insane. Yeah, We saw him a little bit in the tournament last year, but just giving him another year was crazy. Yeah, They they also they, they have a freshman center named Donovan Klingen, who mm-hmm. has some good numbers, too. He's 7'2", big guy out of the East Coast, so they yeah. got some talent. And then another Titan Falls. Purdue blew the brakes off Gonzaga, 84-66. to 66. Um, 
led them to to the Phil Knight Legacy Final that we'll go over in a minute. But Zach Eady was big in this game. The two freshman guards for Purdue, Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer, are legit. And I didn't expect, especially take quick tangent that Fletcher Lawyer originally played for Clarkson back a couple years ago, transferred over to a private school in Indiana, and then got offered and committed to Purdue last season. And those guys are right away uh, contributing to this team. And this team is going to be pretty tough. Pretty tough. Because they got a good mix of veterans and young guys. Yeah. And Gonzaga, got to go back to the drawing board. Um. So then moving on to Saturday... Iowa lost to TCU on Saturday in the Emerald Coast Classic. Um, kind of a weird one. And then Sunday was all the championship games, third place games, all that. Michigan State beat Portland by one. That was a wild game. Michigan State about blew it with a minute and a half to go or something like that. Uh, Auburn beating St. Louis, no big deal. Alabama beating North Carolina 103-101 in a quadruple overtime that game. That game was ridiculous. Was an instant classic. The funniest thing was the announcers, uh, Bill Walton, and I can't remember who else was with him. The last time that Alabama or that North Carolina played a quadruple overtime game was the exact same date, November 27th, like 1976 or something like that. So forever ago, but the same exact date. So that was wild. Uh, so Alabama got, that was the third place game, I believe. Um, so pretty big game for Alabama to bounce back. North Carolina losing two games now, back to back. And Purdue taking down Duke in the Phil Knight legacy. So to take down a couple of powerhouses, taking Gonzaga down and then Duke down to win the tournament, was pretty wild for Purdue, and they did it handily again, 75-56. Purdue is just going to be a tough team, like we said. Uh, Gonzaga beating Xavier in their bounce-back game. That was that third-place game, I believe. And then, finally, UConn beating Iowa State pretty handily for the first place in the Phil Knight Invitational, 71-53. So, already been wild. Um teams all over the place and then last night the ACC Big Ten Challenge started so more meaningful games and I'll let Malik take over because it's a Michigan game uh, Michigan took on Virginia looked really good in the first half but what'd you see what'd you see I'm already more annoyed <laughs> with the Michigan basketball team that I have been in a while um the Jalen Llewellyn experiment is a absolute failure so far. At this point, it looks like he just doesn't know what to do when he's on the court. Kobe Bufkin is starting to get into a rhythm, but I still think it's hard for all of them to establish rhythms when they're all scorers. Mm-hmm. Jet Howard is a stud. I, I There's not much I can say about him. He's a one-and-done guy. He's going to be one of the best shooters in the draft. He's an absolute sniper. Terrence Williams, I I still love what he brings, but he has some negatives on the offensive end to where when you get him the ball, you're not sure if he's going to just run somebody over or score. Mm-hmm. Hunter Dickinson, he's doing what he does. I'm not mad at him. Juwan Howard has some things to figure out, and he needs to figure them out fast. Joey Baker only played like 11 or 12 minutes in that game last night. He was one of two from three. Uh, or it was eleven one minutes, one of one. one. Yeah, but three rebounds. That's what did you bring him here for? Mm. Like I understand you need to get the freshman time to get accustomed to the game with Terrace Reed and Doug uh, Doug McDaniel. I understand you want to make this Jalen Llewellyn thing work. Mm-hmm. I understand you want Kobe Bufkin to be a high level scorer. You have two high-level shooters on this team. One of them is your son, which we all understand he's going to get most of the shots. Yeah. And Joey Baker, the transfer you brought in from Duke. 
Not using him more and not drawing up stuff for him more makes no sense. And Jawan just isn't doing it right now. Yeah. Is his the lineups don't make much sense. They don't have much of a rotation. That's they what don't. that's yeah. what throws me off. So if, he always brings Terrace Reed and, and Doug McDaniel in at the same time. Mm-hmm. He'll bring out the starters, and he'll bring in Jace, yeah, his other son, who's tough but isn't very skilled. Right. Then he'll bring in Joey Baker like a minute later. Mm-hmm. So then there's no school. Then there'll just be like Kobe Bufkin, and no high level playmakers because Doug McDaniel was just a freshman. Yeah. It. Yeah, you go along, go ahead with your. I mean, all I was gonna say is they they rotate a lot of the guards out. Um, like you said. In this game, Terrace Reed came in for five minutes. Doug McDaniel played nine. Jace Howard played eight. Joey Baker played 11. Those are all your guards. So I, I know you're basically playing Hunter Dickinson the entire game, Jet Howard the entire game. But I don't know. Like like we've said multiple times, Joey Baker can be a knockdown shooter. I feel like he should find somewhere, find some more minutes to where if – Kobe Bufkin or somebody is struggling a little bit that he can replace that guy that night maybe see if he's going and then just kind of play off the hot hand at that point yeah um last night Kobe was playing well so I was fine with it mm -hmm. but yeah something needs to change and even even to a lesser degree and I I know he's also a freshman but there was a lot of hype about getting Yusuf Kayat here he doesn't play at all and I get it like I said he's He's a freshman. He's kind of raw talent. But there's a point where you just throw him out there. Give him a chance to to turn into something. Michigan State's been playing Madi Sissoko for four years, and he's been raw the entire time. So you got to figure it out now rather than later, I would say. I, I know you want to try to develop a, a guy, but in my opinion, there's no better yeah. way to develop a guy. He, he has a bunch of raw offensive talent that you might need. Right. He's 6'8". He can shoot. He's got some athleticism. Right. And and while the team is struggling to shoot, I feel like those are the guys you want to try to get in. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's – maybe in practice he's just terrible. But that's just my opinion. Get him into some meaningful minutes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that sometimes Michigan just needs to – they need to just get guys more time. And they don't have to play their starters the entire game. Per se. So it's just interesting. Um, they end up losing to Virginia by two. Kind of disappointing, but you can see the flashes still. So the team's going to be good. It's just, it just, it's going to take a little bit. Listen, they play Kentucky. They play at Kentucky Sunday. Mm -hmm. And this Kentucky team isn't going to be a juggernaut like some of the other Kentucky teams. Yeah. But you can go in there and get blown out easily. Right. And I, I, just, I have no faith in Juwan's just what he's doing right now. I just don't have much faith in it. Hmm. I, I have to see, like, rotations get settled, lineups make sense. I have to see these things happen. Yeah. Um, other news from ACC Big Ten. Maryland blowing out Louisville. No surprise there. Louisville is trash. Yeah. Illinois blowing out Syracuse. It has to be close to the end for Beheim. Yeah. This, yeah. I was just about to His say. His sons are gone. The run of Syracuse may be over. He's dependent on a bunch of, like, freshmen. He's, yeah. Right. Um, Marquette beating Baylor in the Big East, Big 12. Battle. They ran him out the gym. That was a big win for Marquette. Listen, Shaka Smart is still here. Yeah. I, I think he's a better fit for this job than he was at Texas. Yeah. And Marquette's one of those teams that they've been, they've been, been gone for a while. So maybe this is their time to to make a comeback. Uh, uh, I think it's kind of interesting, too. San Diego State beating UC Irvine by three. UC Irvine, a team that at this point is kind of accustomed to making it in uh, to the tournament. So maybe have to watch out for them again. Um, and then tonight, Michigan State's going to play Notre Dame. That'll be a, a good game, hopefully. It'll be a nice test. I think they're kind of similar to Michigan State. There's yeah. a bunch of veterans, a few freshmen getting time. Right. Yeah, this, it'll be a interesting game. Yeah. Uh, Purdue should beat the brakes off of Florida State. Yeah. Um, Ohio State-Duke should be a really good one because mm -hmm. that'll kind of give us – this will be 
a good test, similar, I guess, to what Michigan, Virginia was to feel out where the ACC's at and where the Big Ten's at. Um, so Virginia, Michigan, that was a close game. If this was a close game, you know, both these big conferences look like they're going to be strong all season. Um, and then the nightcap is North Carolina, Indiana, which another good one. Like UNC, the most veteran team in the country. They're they're kind of coming down back to earth. Yeah, preseason hype was a lot. Right, and and they looked yeah. good for a while, but they got to readjust. Yeah, and like we said, Indiana with Trace Jackson Davis, always dangerous. So some big things going on in college basketball. It's kind of my favorite time where you start actually seeing what teams are doing. Um, so I'll just quickly run through the rankings really fast. Um, Houston, number one for the first time since five slam pajama, which is pretty wild. Texas is number two. I don't remember the last time that Texas was even <laughs> anywhere, to be honest. They're usually good. They just can't yeah. ever get, o- get over the hump. Right. Uh, Virginia sitting at three. Arizona at four. Purdue at five. And then we got Baylor, Creighton, UConn, Kansas, Indiana, Alabama, Arkansas, Tennessee, Gonzaga, Auburn, Illinois, Duke, UNC, Kentucky, Michigan State, UCLA, Maryland, Iowa State, San Diego State, and Ohio State. A lot of big names. Malik mentioned it kind of before the podcast. A lot of big names right in the middle there. Yeah. You got your Michigan State, your Kentucky, UNC, Duke, those kind of guys. Even Gonzaga sitting at 14 now. This is why I love college basketball the last couple of years. I feel like I say it every year, but it seems like on any given night, somebody can knock somebody off. And that's kind of my my favorite thing with college basketball lately. So we'll see you going forward. All righty, on to the NFL. We had some Thanksgiving games. We had some Sunday games. We had a Monday game that wasn't all that exciting. But picks were wild once again. So, do you want me to tell you my score or your score first? Yours. So, in week 12, I got... 11 correct picks. It was a good week. Good week. And for your week 12, Malik, you got 11 correct picks. <laughs> so yet again, after one week of changes, oh we are back gosh. to a stalemate. 11-11. Malik, your correct picks sit at 90. I am at 94. Some notable ones from last week. You picked Buffalo over Detroit, which would have been a wild one for me to get. Um... I got Cleveland over Tampa Bay. You got Cincinnati over Tennessee. Uh, You got the Jets over Chicago. You also got Washington over Atlanta. And yeah, I got Carolina over Denver and Las Vegas over Seattle, which was on a walk-off win by Josh Jacobs. I also got Pittsburgh on Monday night. So moving on to, to week 13, more interesting games. Someone's back for a certain team, and he's playing against his other team. Have you heard all how, eyes? Have you heard how messy that game is going to oh, be? Oh, it's the 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 sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard about that one. It's uh, going to be uncomfortable. It will be. It might be the most uncomfortable NFL game like ever. And I think that's probably the point. And it will be wild. So starting off tomorrow night, we get a division matchup: Buffalo. At New England. Buffalo coming off a close win to Detroit. Of course, Detroit losing it in the final 20 seconds of the game. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on the, that final minute when we get to the Lions. Dags preview. I'm still not sure how I feel. We're not picking New England, right? No. Okay. Buffalo on Thursday night. And here it is. Jacksonville at Detroit. Trevor Lawrence might have had his breakout. Maybe. That last drive was... It like, was good. That's high... Like top five level quarterback stuff he did on that last drive. Yep. My only takeaway from that is Baltimore, their four losses are all in fourth quarter games where they blew big leads. It's wild. At Detroit, though, it's hard to beat a Lions team handedly at Detroit. Um, it's They just play so much better at Ford Field. We saw it on Thursday against Buffalo where Lions looked like they were going to win. 
And they didn't. <laughs> they didn't pull it off, of course, as usual. Can I, can I get your thoughts on that last drive where Jared Goff missed the pass and the play calling, the missed pass? What are your thoughts on all of yeah. it? Yeah. Do you put it on Dan Campbell? Do you put it on Goff? What uh, it's a mess of all of it. That's okay. the problem. Uh, I was confused why they didn't try to take a timeout at some point. Um, I know you want to try to like, you're trying to seesaw the balance of giving enough time to score, but not letting too much time fall off so that Josh Allen could do what he did. Um, so I, I get that, but at the end of the day, you didn't use your timeouts and you still gave Josh Allen enough time to do what you didn't want him to do. Uh, so as soon as the Bills got the ball back, I was pretty scared, um, knowing what Josh Allen has done in the past. So that scared me. But it's just the, the problem that I had wasn't even necessarily timeouts. It felt like they were playing for the field goal, and I mm -hmm. hate that. I hate that. You're playing to tie the game against a Buffalo Bills team that you know if you get if they get the ball in overtime. You're going to uh, lose. Even with them taking that deep ball shot on third and one? I don't hate that call. I get the the opposition to it because... If a golf throws it to the end zone instead of a back shoulder right, ball... It's a touchdown. Yeah. Lines win. And I also get the other argument of, why don't you just run the ball because you have a good offensive line and running back that you get the first down, take a couple more seconds off the clock, don't give them any time, and then you secure overtime. I still don't like that. I don't like playing for the field goal in that kind of game. It's a big game for the Lions. You need to just balls to the wall. I thought this is where Dan Campbell is aggressive. Dan Campbell is aggressive all the time, and he decides then that they're going to play for like a field goal not for going, overtime. Not going for that fourth and one. Yeah. That was weird. Uh, so, I don't know. It felt like a, a fail on multiple levels. And like you said, I think the third and one, a lot of people are going back to. And yes, it was a risky play. But again, I would rather them be aggressive and do that kind of thing. Golf also missed St. Brown over the middle. He yes. was wide open. There was multiple misses on that yeah. play that would have gotten a first down. The St. Brown, like you said, crossing her out over the middle, just past the first down line. Yeah, DJ Chark guys. with a touchdown. Literally with a touchdown. I don't know. It's it's weird. It, it it's disappointing. It's weird. It's it's the Lions. At the end of the day, I'm not super upset. It stinks because it's one of those games where you're like, oh, Thanksgiving against the Bills would be a fun one to win. But at the end of the day, we're saving draft picks, I guess. It's all about that Rams pick. Yeah. So we're both taking the Lions, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe <laughs> yeah. Jacksonville's there yet. Uh, Lions defense have been playing better lately, so it's kind of cool to see. Um, quickly on that that Rams pick, though, is that not just like the best of both worlds? Like the Rams make that trade, they win a Super Bowl. Lions get their pick for this year, and it's, it's terrible. Like the Rams fall apart. So they get a Super Bowl like they wanted, <clears throat> and then they fall apart like Lions want. Listen, when you sell your soul for a Super Bowl, there's only one way it can happen afterwards. So things just fall apart. To me, I feel like it's going to be a great trade. Um, now, who we draft with that pick, who we get how they develop Get ready for the will levis express that's all stop it <laughs> stop it um so i'm not opposed to the lions losing some more games so then they have two really good picks but now i'm okay with the lions you know winning some games maybe taking a chance at a wild card spot slim but there is a chance um anyway moving on pittsburgh at atlanta a game nobody wants to watch that pittsburgh win over indy was weird yeah people are all of a sudden, complete 180 on Jeff Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Because of his decisions. Mm -hmm. First two games, it was, oh, I guess he can do it. Now it's, oh, he shouldn't be coaching. Right. Um, that's just, that's just so how it goes. Was, was that more on Indy or was it Pittsburgh? They're not figuring things out. I don't know. I'm taking Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. I'll take Pittsburgh because I think it's enough of a, a flip that we can. Um, Man, I, I, can, I keep waiting, though, for Kenny Pickett to figure it all out. He's... He seems close at times, and then he just... He's taking baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. But, I don't know. Yeah, I thought he'd be more ready, but the offense is also trash. So, yeah, hard for any quarterback to succeed in that one. Right. Green Bay at Chicago. This might be Jordan Love 
versus, I don't know if you heard, Tim Boyle. Chicago had to sign Tim Boyle off of the Lions practice squad because Trevor Simeon is banged up. So potentially, I would infer that that may mean that Justin Fields is getting shut down for the season. Potentially. Um, go, Pat, go. This is weird. Yeah, I with all that news that I heard, I can't pick Chicago. This game is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm hopeful for Jordan Love a little bit. It'd be cool if like Jordan Love and Christian Watson kind of turned Green Bay around without Aaron Rodgers. I feel like if you're a Packers or a Bears fan, you like these there's no reason to be excited about this game at all. No. There's no bragging rights. Is, yeah. Yep. Jets at Minnesota. This could be interesting. Mike White. <laughs> the Mike White the experience. Return. But the, is this going to be a Jeff Saturday syndrome? Where everybody's excited about Mike White taking over for Zach Wilson doing his Anakin Skywalker on the sideline. <laughs> or uh, is Mike White, Mike White for real? Listen, I, I think even if he's not great in this game, he's 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 just he needs to start the rest of the season. Yeah. Playing Minnesota and being average to bad isn't – he's Mike White. Yeah. He, you, they expect him to do the simple things well, and that's what he does. Mm-hmm. Zach Wilson isn't a pro right now. Right. Mike White is a pro. Mm-hmm. And that's enough for this team with their defense. Yeah. And Minnesota, man. I just, I can't buy into them, but they're nine and two. Mm-hmm. They, that was a good win over. They met, they let Mac Jones throw for some yards, though. Yeah, their defense is definitely beatable for sure. Man, that Jets defense is really good. Give me. Give me New York. Give me New York. All right. It's probably a good pick because I was going to pick New York, but on the 50-50, I think I will take Minnesota. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It would be a big loss if Minnesota lost this game, yeah. I think. Um, Washington at the Giants. The Commanders have as many wins as the Giants now. <laughs> uh, this is the funniest division in football. The Giants now. are falling back. Commanders are on the rise. It's Taylor Heineke season. Did you see that Sean Taylor tribute? The let's, not, let's not talk about it. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> that friends, listen. Uh, the wire frame. They, if I was Sean Taylor's family, I would just. I wouldn't go back. I would just get, get that Washington franchise just out of your heads. Yes, it did. Do not allow them to take up space. They've ruined every ceremony they've done for Sean Taylor. It's wild. And, I mean, their stadium has so many issues already with, you know, the Jalen Hurts thing a couple of years ago. It, gosh. Yeah, they're 7-5. and five. <laughs> It's bad. Yeah. Give me the Giants. I have no reasoning. I have This game could go several different ways. I just, I'm just going to go with the Giants. Yeah, and for that, I'll take Washington. I don't like this game. It's going to be weird, yeah. like we said. Uh, Tennessee at Philadelphia. Philly is supposed to get Jordan Davis back. With that news. What scenario do you take, even without him? Well, without Jordan Davis, Philadelphia's run defense is actually not good. They've given up a lot of yards. So mm-hmm. I would have probably said Tennessee. With him coming back, though, he ten, he's he been like, I think there's a difference of like three yards when he's in play um, compared to when he's out uh, on running plays. It's like. When he's in, they allow three yards per carry. When he's out, it's like six or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, so it's kind of, it's actually pretty meaningful, especially for this game, playing against Derrick Henry. Titans, they're this team every year. Like, they're just kind of, you think like, oh, the Titans, yeah, they're all right. But they're not that yeah. good. And then after, they get to the first seed. After last year when they were supposed to make their run and they right. fell to Cincinnati, I don't believe in them anymore. Okay. Like uh, I, the only way I would believe in Tennessee again is if they go full like Malik Willis and just like change the offense. Mm. So you're gonna take Philly? Yes. Okay, then I will take Tennessee since I have some wiggle room. I do think there's always a chance for Derrick Henry to do something. I think the Titans are kind of figuring out their passing game a little bit. They have gotten Traylon Burks going a little bit. Maybe there's something there. I don't know. I'm not super believe uh, believable. I don't 
believe in it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Denver at Baltimore. Jesus. Please. If Baltimore loses this game. I didn't even watch highlights of the last Broncos game. The Broncos-Panthers. Because why would I do that to myself? No. And As a Broncos fan, I am so sorry. You got blown out by the Panthers. And Sam Darnold. Must be rough. I, I don't even know what to say. Apparently... The news is out that uh, Russell Wilson is losing uh, his voice in the locker room. Surprise. <laughs> he probably lost his voice in the locker room weeks ago. Is this the worst trade ever? It's shaping up to be. If this continues the way it is. Like, if they finish 5 and 13? On a scale 12. of... 5 and 12. On a scale of 1-2 Celtics Nets, where does this fall? Say right there. You said on the scale of what? Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> on the scale of one to the Celtics Nets. Trade of Kevin Garnett and all that. Oh. And all the picks. This is, this might be worse because like Brooklyn turned it around eventually, but still, yeah, it's it's not good. Yeah, and the salary cap, cap hit on but Russell Wilson is really bad. This is worse because we knew the those players for the Celtics were already done. Yeah, true. And over the hill. True. Everybody whereas, expected Russell Wilson was going to be Russell Wilson. Whereas we're, in this scenario, Russell Wilson is going from DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, who are really good receivers, to Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, guys like Tim Patrick, ended up getting hurt, but also a, a good, solid receiving core um, with better defense and things like that. Yeah, where we found out Russ was cooked in live time. Yeah. And that's There's a reason he wasn't cooking. Depressing. Pete Carroll knew, apparently. Anyway. Wild. We're not picking Denver. Yeah. Cleveland at Houston. Should we even pick it, this game? It keeps getting worse for Houston. They put in Kyle Allen, and his like first two passes are like turnovers last week. And Damian Pierce is hitting his his rookie wall. In the past two weeks, he's had like ten carries for like eight yards. It, it's it's been so bad. I almost want to pick Houston, but. This 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 whole game is just yeah. a bad vibe. Cleveland. You know what? I, I feel terrible, but Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Deshaun Watson reinstated for this game. Apparently. You know what? Yeah, just, let's just, yeah. Apparently, a the defense attorney and, well, wouldn't be, they're the defense in this case. Never mind. Um, tw- What is it? Ten women? Ten of the uh, ten of the accusers. Ten of the accusers and their attorney are getting a suite at the game. Yeah, yeah. To, to watch the game. This is the filthiest game in NFL history. And this is at Houston. At at Houston. I the vibe in that stadium. I I almost want to like just I would want to be there for just a few minutes just to feel that like what 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 kind of vibe is that going to be in that stadium. Yeah. It's going to feel wrong. Somebody is going to try to run on the field. Somebody that might run no on the doubt. field. There's going to be some fights. Yeah, they got to going to be pretty. They got to make sure everything is locked down. Um there're going to be some very inappropriate signs at that game. And it's going to be Wow. Uh, I hope this is on TV. <laughs> I hope this is on TV. <laughs> if because, you have a fire stick in all NFL games, tune into this one. Yeah, and you know that any time that a sack happens or whatever. Like, Houston may be the loudest stadium in the NFL this weekend. There, there's Maybe. a chance for it. Because I'm sure there's animosity, not towards just, like, the legal stuff that Deshaun Watson's gotten in, but him just leaving Houston, leaving the Texans, and all that stuff. Like, yeah. yeah I, Nick Chubb. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Houston has the worst yeah. run defense. Back to football. Houston has the worst <laughs> run defense in the NFL. Cleveland has Nick Chubb. Yeah, but I, I guess Deshaun will hit a few nice passes. Cleveland I'm going to go, wins. because I have the leeway, I'm going to go Houston in a miracle. <laughs> I'm I'm going to go with this very weird score of like 17-15 or something. This game is going to be weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because <sighs> yeah. Cleveland's defense also is not very good. So maybe there's a chance. Houston would get wild if they won the game. 
Seattle at the Rams. Rams just keep tanking, please. Yeah, Seattle. Keep tanking. Matthew Stafford may be shut down for the season, too. Just retire. You won your ring. Just just retire. <laughs> just retire. Um, Miami at San Francisco. This is maybe a game. These may be the games of the week right here coming up that we're about to yeah, talk about. They actually they flex this game. No, it's the following oh, 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 week. Oh, yeah, it's the following week. Yeah. Week. So this is a 4 o'clock game. Which team is for real? Tua and the Dolphins? Jimmy 49ers G and the 49ers. defense versus the Miami offense. Mm-hmm. 49ers are a little banged up, but I think their key players will be playing. I'm going to go Miami. All right. I think Tua is just in a, he's in a zone right now. I will go he's San Francisco. I think these are all flippable games, but it should be a lot of fun. The other fun one, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Please be a shootout. Please be a shootout. I don't expect it to be as crazy as last year's game. That yeah. game last year was insane. Mm-hmm. Jamar Chase just went nuts. Jamar Chase will be back for this game. Mm-hmm. Hard to say how healthy he's going to be, though, mm-hmm. um, or if he'll be limited or not. But it really, it shouldn't matter. Kansas defense is trash. I'm going to go with the Bengals. Okay. Yeah. I will go with Kansas City then. I feel it's, again, I feel it's flippable. I just want this game to be good, to, to be honest. I really don't care who wins. Um, as long as it's fun. And then the Chargers at the Raiders. I, I guess, think I hate the Raiders more than... Because <laughs> they beat I, Seattle? I really, because... They have so much talent and they my just... My former hope in Derek Carr, because of that coach, that sh- Josh McDaniels, that organization, I just, I, I can't support what they... No. No... No, no, Seattle. I mean, not Seattle. Chargers. <laughs> Chargers. Well, I'll take uh, I'll take Vegas because I have Josh Jacobs on my fantasy team, and he has been amazing this season, and he's actually a lot of fun to watch. Um, but yeah, I I hate the direction that Vegas is going. They need to be. They should be way better than they are. Um, but I will take them in this scenario. Are they the most disappointing team of the season? They're probably right there, for sure. Indianapolis at Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. This is a bad game. Listen, so starting Matt Ryan against Micah Parsons, I, I almost don't even want to watch it. T, <laughs> this won't be fun. Yeah, I agree. This will not be fun for Jeff Saturday. Right. And then New Orleans at Tampa Bay on Monday night. It's weird. Tampa. Uh, New Orleans is one of those other teams that's really disappointing this season. Uh. They just, one, they've had a lot of injury issues. The entire NFC South is just. They keep playing Andy Dalton. I don't know. And then Tampa Bay, yeah, they've been a disappointment as well. But they're at home Monday night. Normally I would say New Orleans because usually it seems like New Orleans actually has Tampa's number. But I'm going to go with Tampa Bay, I think. I'll go Tampa Bay as well. And that's your week 13, right? Week 13 or week 12? Week 13? Yeah, week 13. My bad. I couldn't even tell. I, <laughs> it's 13. Yeah, I I'm just, app. I didn't even see I'm it. just slacking. But, again, full swing. About to get towards the end of the college football season. Uh, we'll recap the... Conference championships, and then we can kind of take a break just for a week or two before we really have to dive into the playoff stuff. Um, Maybe we could talk more NBA. Yeah, we can get more NBA segments. Maybe do deeper dives into other college basketball teams. We'll see um, because there's a lot of meaningful games going on. And then, of course, week 14 of the NFL as the NFL gets closer and closer to the playoffs. But this has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. I can believe in Michigan football again. That's wild. Go blue.